بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم اے ویری وارم ویلکم ٹو آرمی برن ہال کالج فار گرلس ٹو کالج لائف اینڈ ٹو کمپیوٹر سائنس ڈپارٹمنٹ دس از یور انسٹرکٹر انم پرویز فرام کمپیوٹر سائنس ڈپارٹمنٹ آئی ایل ان شاء اللہ ٹیچ یو دس سبجیکٹ انٹروڈکشن ٹو کمپیوٹر سائنس ہوپ فلی یو آر ٹیکنگ آل دا پریکاشنری میجرس ان آڈر ٹو اسٹے سیف As you know, dear students, due to COVID-19 pandemic, due to the unpredictable circumstances nowadays, you couldn't join us in a proper physical environment or classroom, but that can't hinder our efforts to reach out to our students in order to deliver necessary quality educational services. Our first priority is you, your valuable time, and your education. Here, I want to share something just as a reminder that when Shakespeare was quarantined due to plague epidemic, he wrote the famous novel King Lear. The lesson hidden in this sentence is that every challenge or difficulty actually brings along an opportunity for you. That opportunity is to utilize your time in a proper way. Now is the high time when you can indulge yourself in educational activities. Remember that where your fear is, there is your task. So dear students, today we are conducting an orientation based class, just an introductory class for you. I'll not teach you the contents today. It's just being conducted to give you a bit of a familiarity to give you a wake up alert. So the aims and objectives or the learning outcomes of this lecture would be number one, to discuss the facts regarding your decision to opt for a computer science field. Our second objective would be to discuss the teaching methodologies in order to compensate the students keeping in view the current circumstances. Third objective, to discuss the course contents. And fourth and last objective would be to discuss some basic motivational factors in order to keep you going. So coming back to the first objective, that is, we would discuss some facts regarding your decision to opt for computer science field. Some of you might be in a state of confusion that is it safe or is it feasible to opt for this field or maybe people around you are still not satisfied with your decision keeping in view the fact that it has got some scope or not. So the first thing you need to know about your field is that there is a difference between a computer and a computer science field. A computer is an electronic device, a machine which takes input or data from the user, processes that data, stores the data and displays it in the form of output on the screen. While computer science is a field which encompasses computerized digital devices, their architectures, algorithms and programming languages for the development of software, designing hardware circuitry, networking of the devices through telecommunication means, etc., etc. So computer is just a machine performing certain tasks while computer science is a huge domain encompassing many other subdomains. So the fact is, computer science is no more about computers than astronomy is about telescopes. Computer science is like MBBS. During MBBS, medicine students study all the basic subjects relevant to medicine. For example, anatomy, physiology, pediatrics, gynecology, ENT, orthopedics, dermatology, radiology, pathology, and many more. After completion of MBBS, the students then do the specialization in any particular subject, like somebody can go for specialization in gynecology, 
somebody else gets his FCPS in cardiology, someone else uh, in radiology, etc. Likewise, in computer science at higher levels, at uh, university level, you study all the basics of software and hardware engineering, artificial intelligence and robotics, telecommunications and networking, web, web development, graphic designing, and afterwards at MS or PhD level, you choose one of the subjects as the main field for specialization from the subdomains of computer science. Furthermore, computer science has its own engineering fields. So, dear students, after FSC uh, or in some cases after BS computer science, you can choose any field right now being shown on the screen for higher studies or as a career afterwards. Like uh, you can opt for software engineering. Uh, you can be a computer hardware engineer. Uh, you can opt for robotics and intelligent machine uh, engineering. Uh, you can go for artificial intelligence. Uh, you can take admission in network communications and distributed systems. You can take admission in signal and image processing. Uh, you can take admission in avionics engineering. You can take admission in uh, biomedical engineering. Uh, you can take admission in bioinformatics. You can opt for information technology. Uh, you can opt for machine learning and data mining. Uh, you can opt for computation science and engineering. Uh, afterwards, after your uh, FSC in, in computer science, you can opt for electrical engineering. Uh, you can be a telecommunication engineer afterwards. Uh, you can go for engineering management. Uh, you can uh, go for quantum computing. Uh, you can go for cyber security or information secu um, security. Uh, you can take admission in innovative technologies in education. Uh, you can take admission in mechatronics engineering. You can uh, take admission in nanoscience and engineering. You can opt for remote sensing and uh, GIS, geographic and information systems, uh, or you can opt for system engineering or for IoT, Internet of Things. So you can join any kind of organization for a job in the country while having a CS computer science degree in your hands. Bureau of Labor Statistics presented a comparison among different fields with respect to job ratio means between 2012 to 2020, which field would be able to produce the largest number of new jobs? That would be computer science and technology relevant fields. Computing relevant fields would generate 65% new jobs in the market. Traditional engineering fields would generate 17% new jobs. Maths would generate 3% jobs. Life sciences would be able to generate 4% new jobs, physical sciences would generate 4% jobs, and social sciences would be able to, gen to generate only 7% new jobs. Among the world's top 10 billionaires, mostly belong to technology-based fields. Top one, Jeff Bezos, belongs to this field. And number second, Bill Gates. Number fifth, Carlos Slim Hello. Number seventh, Larry Ellison number 8, Mark Zuckerberg, and number 10, Larry Page, all belong to IT or computer science field. However, aside from the perks and privileges which this field actually holds, point to ponder upon is this, that in this era when women are increasingly prominent in medicine, law, and business around the world, why are there so few women scientists and technology engineers? The fact is that this field needs more women representation than ever now. I assure you, dear students, you have made the best choice of your life by opting for this subject. Dear students, now coming towards our second objective, which is relevant to the teaching methodologies we are adopting, keeping in view the current scenario. 
So the first method is that we would deliver the lectures in recorded form, which you would be able to access through college web page portal, uh, through our uh, college's uh, YouTube channel. Hopefully, you have already been assigned uh, a portal login ID and password for that. Any kind of classwork or homework uh, or any assignment would be uploaded by the teacher on your portal along with these recorded lectures. You would easily access every material from there. But for me, students' interaction, students' reaction and feedback is very, very important. So I've decided that after uploading every recorded lecture, I'll inshallah conduct a video conferencing based online class for you people in order to know one another, to interact with one another, to bridge the virtual and physical gaps between us. In this way, you would be able to ask uh, live questions uh, from me in order to solve your doubts and ambiguities. To serve this purpose, you would be sent a link to download video conferencing uh, software called as Google Zoom. Uh, you would also be sent a tutorial or manual that how to use that software. Don't worry, dear students. We will be available for any kind of help for any kind of guidance, you will surely and gradually adjust with this routine. It would take a bit of a time, but don't worry and don't panic. So dear students, our third objective for today's lecture is to discuss the course contents. First of all, I'll tell you the book to follow. Your course book recommended by the Federal Board is the textbook of computer science, grade 11 of National Book Foundation. Um, this book is easily available on stationery shops um, around your home. So this book has got eight chapters. First chapter covers the hardware, the structure and functionality of hardware and software as well. Second chapter is concerned with the memory of a uh, computer, means uh, volatile and non-volatile storage devices, volatile and non-volatile memories, their structures, and uh, how their machinery or circuitry works, etc., etc. Third chapter spans around the microprocessors and internal parts of microprocessor. Fourth chapter specifically surrounds all the parts attached or located inside the system unit as well as on a motherboard. Fifth chapter is based on the concept of networking relevant to telecommunications. Sixth chapter elaborates the concepts of networking with respect to wireless communication mediums and satellites. Seventh and eighth chapters uh, revolve around databases. So dear students, here you can see this hierarchy. Actually this hierarchy shows the essence of first four ch chapters, means half of your book. As you can see that in our first chapter we would inshallah cover uh, Input devices, in input devices, inshallah, uh, we would study keyboard, uh, pointing devices like mouse, trackball, touchpad, joystick, touch screen, or light pen. Uh, further, in input devices, we would, inshallah, study audiovisual input devices like microphone or digital camera. Uh, in input devices. Furthermore, we will study about the optical input devices like scanners or magnetic stripe cards. Further, we will study the types of scanner like flatbed scanner, handheld scanner, drum scanner, and barcode readers. Uh, after input devices, in our first chapter, we will study output devices. In output devices, we will uh, study the uh, monitors, uh, all the types of monitors, uh, like colored monitors specifically, 
uh, CRTs, cathode ray tubes, and liquid crystal displays and light emitting diodes. Uh, in output devices, we will furthermore study all the types of printers, uh, impact printers, non-impact printers, subtypes of impact and non-impact printers, which are character printers and line printers. Furthermore, in character or line printers, we would study about dot matrix or daisy wheel printers uh, or chain or drum printers. In non-impact printers, we will, inshallah, study about laser or inkjet printers. So we will study about all the machinery uh, and the elements involved in the working of uh, printers. Uh, in output devices, inshallah, we would study uh, furthermore about plotters, the types of plotters, flatbed plotters, drum plotters, and uh, in uh, output devices, we will study about the speakers too. After input and output devices, we will study about uh, different types of software. Basically, there are four types of software, system software, application software, in internet applications, and licensed softwares. Uh, we will uh, st study about uh, the subtypes of these softwares, like in system software, we will uh, study about operating uh, systems, device drivers, utility programs, language processors. In application software, we will study about productivity software, business software, um, entertainment software, educational software. In internet applications, we would study about web applications, cloud applications, or social media networking apps, and in licensed uh, softwares, we would study about open source softwares, shareware softwares, freeware softwares, and from firmware softwares. Okay, G. So the first ch chapter will revolve around the input devices, output devices, and the types of software. Second chapter, second chapter will uh, totally revolve around uh, the types of memories, volatile memories and non-volatile memories. In volatile memories, we would um, study about RAM, the types of RAM, like a dynamic RAM, static RAM, further the t uh, subtypes of these RAM. Or uh, then we would study about uh, non-volatile memories, like um, ROM, the types of ROM. Uh, then we would study about the secondary memory, the types of secondary memory, which would be magnetic memories and flash memories and optical memories. So second chapter will totally span around volatile and non-volatile memories and their subtypes. Third chapter. Third chapter will basically revolve around the parts of a microprocessor. Um, arithmetic logic unit, uh, control unit part of a microprocessor, registers and buffers of a microprocessor, and cache. While our fourth chapter uh, will revolve around, we will study uh, about all the components attached inside a system unit uh, from power supply and hard disk to motherboard. We will further uh, study all the components attached on a motherboard, like CPU socket or BIOS and expansion slots, cables, cooling system and buses, ports, expansion cards, and memory modules. So dear students, uh, this hierarchy actually shows the essence of the topics of first four chapters means half the book. Okay, G. Now last but not the least, my fourth and last objective for today's lecture is a bit of a motivational talk. Dear students, kindly work on yourself. Take advantage of this time. Try to increase your knowledge, even other than the course books, because Knowledge shapes your thinking. That's why we say people having limited knowledge have limited horizons. They have limited thinking. Knowledge shapes your thinking. It dominates your thought process. Your thinking, as a result, shapes your concepts. Your concepts then make your habits. As a result, your habits affect your attitude. Your attitude, in turn, affects your actions. Your actions generate, or your actions are actually responsible for your results. And most importantly, your results decide your future. So in order to change your future, 
firstly you need to change your thinking and that can only be achieved by gaining knowledge so my dearies in these days of lockdown kindly work on your habits especially especially uh, prioritize your tasks with respect to time don't waste your precious time anymore i'll tell you a quadrant which will uh, help you to keep your time and activities in check uh, you can see this quadrant on screen which shows important and non-important stuff as well as urgent and non-urgent stuff so how you will keep in check your activities you need to see this that uh, if something is important as well as urgent judge a task judge your activities if you feel that something is important as well as urgent do it at the moment do it now if you feel that something is important but not urgent schedule it plan it for some other week for some other month but you need to do it later on too if you see that something is important something is urgent but not important something is urgent but not important reschedule it if you feel that something is not important as well as not urgent kindly try to avoid it or if you need to do it do it later on so dear students as your virtual classes have now been started it's high time to prioritize your studies adjust yourself gradually with this new routine and don't forget to buy a new class notebook and some stationery for this subject kindly note down today's lecture in your class notebook thank you for your time may allah bless you stay safe and stay healthy allah hafiz Thank <laughs> you.